today on Atomic Answers. Let's get some practice predicting products of chemical reactions. Now I've got in this playlist a video on all of the different reaction types, but today I wanted us to get some scrambled practice where we had to start each problem from the ground up. So let's go ahead and get started. First, we've got lithium reacting with diatomic nitrogen gas. And on the side note, I would remind you that hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, fluorine, chlorine, some others also exist diatomically in nature. You won't find nitrogen with just one atom. You'll find nitrogen bonded to another one of itself for the purpose of obtaining an octet. And so what we have here essentially are, are just two elements, lithium, and we have nitrogen. So what type of reaction might this be? Well, if not a single replacement, because we need at least a co one compound in a single replacement reaction, it's certainly not double replacement because both reactants would have to be compounds. It's not a decomposition reaction because you would only have to have one single reactant. So the only type of reaction this can be is a synthesis reaction. And of course, that also could be called combination. And so in a synthesis reaction, we're simply going to combine the two single reactants together into one product, lithium nitride. Now, you know, anytime in any reaction type, you produce an ionic product, we don't just carry over subscripts from the reactants. In fact, we only carry subscripts over if they're polyatomic ions. And if you have those, I would suggest you put them in parentheses. That way you'll know they carry over from one side to the other. But here, um, we don't have any polyatomic ions. So the only thing that we can do is check for subscripts using the cross charge rule. Lithium is in group one on the periodic table, giving it a plus one charge. Nitrogen is in group five on the periodic table, giving it a minus three charge. These numbers are not equal but opposite, so we're going to cross them over. So the charge of the nitrogen is the subscript on the lithium, and the charge of the lithium is the subscript on the nitrogen. So essentially, you're going to be producing Li3N. Now, of course, this equation isn't balanced, uh, but we'll be having a video on that shortly. In this next equation, we've got two reactants, and they're both compounds, metal bonded to nonmetal or metal bonded to polyatomic ion. And so this is going to be a double replacement or a double displacement reaction. Now, again, my suggestion is first, to look and see if you have any polyatomic ions. And if you do, put them in parentheses. And we've got two, uh, one polyatomic ion here, your phosphate, your PO4. The only time a polyatomic ion will break up and not be the same on both sides of a chemical reaction is if it's a decomposition reaction. So this being a double replacement reaction, you're going to have PO4 on the other side. Now, it may not be bonded to the hydrogen, but it'll be on the other side. The second step, underline the metal or the acting metal for each reactant. Hydrogen can act as a metal in certain circumstances. Um, again, we got videos on redox reactions for that. And iron, of course, is a metal. And so now that we got those two preliminary steps done, what you have to realize in predicting the products of a double replacement reaction is that you simply just don't combine two underlined atoms. So the only thing that you can combine hydrogen with on the other side is, oh, what's not underlined, and that's the bromine. Now, we don't carry the three over because it's not a polyatomic ion. And so we drop subscripts when we're going from reacting to product, again, if it's not a polyatomic ion. The only thing that the iron can bond with that's not underlined on the other side is the polyatomic ion. And so in this case, the four does carry over because it's a part of it in the parentheses. Now it's time for us to check um, for subscripts using the cross charge rule. Rule of thumb, if you produce something in uh, that's on the left-hand side of the table and it has something bonded to it on the right-hand side of the table, 
metal non-metal, you need to check it for subscripts with the cross-charge rule. So hydrogen's in group 1, plus 1 charge. Bromine is in group 7, so minus 1 charge, good to go there. Now we need to check for the charges of the iron phosphate, which of course is not what it's called because the iron is going to be actually iron 3. Let's talk about why. So iron is a transition metal, and you can't just necessarily get the charge of a transition metal from the periodic table. So what we do is we look on the reactant side for context clues. Now you see here that there is a 3, and the only reason that 3 is a subscript on your bromine is because it was originally, or still is I should say, the charge of the transition metal iron. So that's how we found that out. On a polyatomic ion list online, or maybe your teacher gave you one, you look for PO4 phosphate, and again that's going to have a 3 minus charge. So in both of these circumstances, the charges are equal but opposite, so there's no need for us to cross over the charges. All right, now let's take a look at this next example. Just like the first one, you have two reactants that are both uh, uncombined with any other element. Now you do have oxygen that's diatomic, but again, that's a normal thing. Keep in mind, again, oxygen, hydrogen, nitrogen, uh, fluorine, chlorine, some others are going to exist that way in nature. And so we have two uncombined reactants, uh, and this is also going to be a combination or a synthesis reaction. And in that circumstance, we, well, just combine them. But again, we produce the ionic product. We have to check for subscripts only use the cross-charge rule. You can't just blindly carry a subscript over unless it's a polyatomic ion. So aluminum is in group 3 with a 3 plus charge. Oxygen is in group 6 with a 2 minus charge. So the charge of the oxygen is the subscript on the aluminum. And the charge of the aluminum is the subscript on your oxygen. That's going to form aluminum oxide. Al2O3. There's no hint in the name of an ionic bond as to what its subscripts are going to be. And finally, ooh, this is an interesting one. We have a single reactant, and it just says plus heat. So this is going to be a decomposition reaction. Now just FYI, some decomposition reactions will just have the a single reactant and then the arrow. There won't be two reactants. So that will be another indicator of a decomp reaction, but uh, a lot of the time they'll put plus heat or plus light or plus electricity. Anything that provides the energy for the compound to break apart, uh, you can potentially include that as a reactant for a decomposition reaction. Now, there are a couple different rules for decomp reactions, and I have a video about it on the playlist here. Um, but essentially, if you have a metal carbonate, it's going to break up into a metal oxide plus CO2. If you have a metal hydroxide, it's going to break up into a metal oxide plus water. And in some circumstances, somewhat rare, the compound will just literally split in half. Uh, but in this circumstance, we have magnesium hydroxide, so we have a metal hydroxide. And again, the video that we have on decomp reactions tell us that it's going to decompose into a metal oxide. So your metal is magnesium and oxygen is the oxide part plus water. So water is a covalent compound. We can't check it for subscripts for the cross-charge rule. It's, it's just good. Well, we can the magnesium oxide, but magnesium is in group 2 with a 2 plus charge. Oxygen is in group 6 with a 2 minus charge. We're good to go.